all over the world, families are having too many crises all over the world. Marriages are crashing everywhere. You hear people say, I don't love him. I don't love her. Some insist they were deceived even into the marriage. No, I was deceived. This man deceived me. She deceived me. The truth is, every crisis in the home is wisdom crisis. Every challenge, your father, including you, you're about to enter, if you want to have any crisis, is wisdom what? Crisis. And it's not demonic crisis, it's wisdom crisis. In the book of Matthew chapter 7, and if you read 24 to 27, look at this scripture. You may know it, but look at it. Therefore, whosoever hear these saints of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which build his house upon what? The word. And the rain descended thick north, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not because it was founded on the word. Take note of that word. The rain came, the wind blew, challenges came, but nothing shook the house because it was founded on the word. And everyone that heard these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be like unto a foolish man, will be his house upon the sand. Look at it. The rain descended. In that one, the rain also descended. Remember? Verse 25, the same thing. And the floods came, verbatim the same. And the winds came, and beat upon the heart. And what? And it fell, and great was the fall of it. If you were, two of them had the same similar experiences, not different experiences. One survived it. One does survive it. What you are shouting, breaking your house for, somebody else was able to overcome it. The difference is wisdom. Is what? One had the same problem that is making you to divorce. One had the same problem that's making you to beat. One has the same problem that's making you to quarrel. But he overcame it or she overcame it because they found it on the word. And it's simple wisdom. It happened to two of you, the same things. What you are shouting now to say, oh, my wife is bad, my husband is bad, my, this girl I want to marry is bad. Somebody else walked through it and saw nothing in it. The missing link is what? Wisdom. Now hear this. And he said, wisdom is the principal thing. Is what? Proverbs 4, verse 7. So we must invest our time, energy, resources to make it work. Pursuit white scriptural counsel if you want and I pray things will work for you Amen. your greatest investment in life is in the mind then your second greatest investment is your family relationship I repeat your greatest investment is what your mind the second greatest investment of any man's life is your family relationship but you know, people don't invest in it. You can change your home to be heaven on earth. Your home is important to God. Very important to God. Hear what God said. In Matthew 18, 18 and 19, whatsoever shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever shall what? Lose on earth shall be lose where? We know this part. Well, look at verse 19 together. Again I say unto you, if two of you shall what? As touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father, which is what? The greatest agreement between your husband and wife. It is stronger than your pastor and you. I'm going to explain to you. The greatest agreement is not the pastor. No matter how spiritual, it's not as strong as a husband and wife. You know why? Man is three-dimensional. He has a, a spirit. He has a soul. He dresses the body. Now, the pastor, who is your pastor, can share only two rooms with you. The spirit, born again, the soul. It does not share body. It's only the husband and wife that share the body. So when the husband and wife stand to say, in the name of Jesus, heaven must respond. Satan knows it. Satan knows what? He knows that you have so much power that if the husband and wife say, no, it will be no. If they say, yes, it will be yes. So they say, hey, these people have too much power. If I let them, they will destroy me. Satan knows it. But husband and wives don't know it. See where wisdom comes in? Shout hallelujah. Now, God established
scriptural protocol for the home. One time I was in a presidency and a then president's wife was coming to tell her protocol. They said, when the world prize is coming, sir, could you stand here? That is the protocol of this place. All I did was to walk out. There was a protocol. You can't, when the president's wife is coming because it's the man's wife, you don't stand no matter who you are like this. They tell you to stand at a particular point so they will show that that's the first lady. Now, to go there and say, well, I'm also important. Military men will bond you out. Because there's a protocol in the presidency. I was working with a top woman in this church at the airport. We were talking. She stepped one backward. I said, ah, my daughter, why? He said, we are tough never to walk side by side with a boss. By protocol. That you must be one step backward to show that that man is your boss. You don't walk together with him. Now, every environment has a protocol. The home has a protocol. You don't live anyhow you like. God established the protocol of the home. He said to the man in Ephesians chapter 5, if you read 22 to 23, he said, for the man, this is the protocol. Love your wife. And for the woman, this is the protocol. Submit to your husband. If you break this protocol, every other thing will crash. So I hear. So your home must follow the protocol of man, love. Woman, submit. Anything that breaks that protocol will lead to crisis. That is God-ordained protocol for the family. Is that true? For the home. Man, love what? I, I can't I can love the man who has no time for me. You, I can't love, sorry, I can't love the woman who does not respect me. You break the protocol. You have crisis. I can't submit to a man who does not love me. You break the protocol. God never says, he said, you do your path. Forget the other part. This is protocol. This is what? Well, now, if you go to the United Kingdom, they drive the opposite of Nigeria. The protocol of the United Kingdom is that you have to drive on the left. Very odd. The protocol of the United States and Nigeria, you drive on the right. Now, if you leave Nigeria and say, now in the UK, I don't care, I'm in Nigeria, and go on the right, you have accident. You kill yourself. You go on a suicide mission. Because every car will hit you. Bwah! When you don't obey the protocol of love, you will have a crash. That is the protocol. You don't have to feel like you have to do it because this is God's own protocol. Any disobedience to that protocol will end in a crash. That's why many marriages are what? Crashing. Because they don't want to follow the protocol. So here. Is somebody getting simple? Now, I'll tell you how to have a good relationship. How to have what? Now, brother, you're a young man. You are married. How do I have a good what? Many have relationship, but not good relationship. I have to have a good relationship. Good one. Number one, how to have a good relationship. Number one, realize you have an invisible enemy. Realize you have what? You have an invisible enemy. Satan is the invisible enemy. Satan's major tool is conversation. Every tragedy in any home begins with a conversation. It means what? In Genesis 3, you don't bother to open. The first thing Satan did to crush the first family, he conversed with Eve. He talked to her. He said, Eve, did God say? He was conversing. And Eve began to converse with him. He flooded her straight. And the family was destroyed. Your family will not be destroyed. Amen. When he wanted to destroy the entire human race, he began to converse with Jesus. But Jesus was smarter than him in Luke chapter 4. He said, Jesus, it was conversational. It was what? If thou are the Son of God, Jesus said, I'm smarter than you. You flood the first family to conversation. You can't flood me. Listen carefully. Satan will not come the way you think. And his conversation 
can come through people. Through what? It can come through soap opera. It can come through your carnal mind. You stay like this and say, you know what? The way your wife is doing, don't, don't you see her like a witch? Let's converse with you. See, do every time she wears red lipstick. That red lipstick is a symbol of red blood. <laughs> <laughs> then look at your husband and say, can't you see him? The way he's moving, that's how men want to use their wives for ritual move. <laughs> it's conversing with you. You know what God said in Ephesians 6 verse 12? He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You are not fighting against mortal man. He said, resist the devil and he will flee. So every family that wants to make it must be conscious as an invisible enemy called the devil and always be prayerful. Check the last time you had an attack. Two of you are not praying. It's difficult for the enemy to penetrate a prayerful family. So, be vigilant, be sober for your adversary, like a roaring lion looking for who he will devour. So, two of you must always be prayerful to make sure he does not penetrate the family and feed yourself with the word of God. Shout hallelujah. Number two, how to have a good relationship, number two, watch what you see and hear. I repeat, watch what you see and what? If you want a good relationship, watch it, what you see. There was this scientific research life done by a major university. They brought two groups of children and then divided them into two rooms to watch videos. Now, in the video life research, scientific life research, in the video, they did something. They took dolls and dropped them in the two rooms and allowed adults in that video to enter the two rooms. One said the adults entered and carried the dolls and pampered them, played with them, and dropped them carefully. Then in the other room, the adults entered and ruffled the dolls, hit them through them. They now took the children and divided into two groups. Allowed the group that watched how the doors were rough and allowed the groups that watched the All the children that entered the, where they watched the video, they picked the doors and played with them and dropped them. Then all the children that saw that one, they kicked the doors because of what they saw. Life story. What you see affects you negatively or positively. Let me say this to shock you. Research reveals that where there has been abuse in a marriage, the husband observed his father abusing his mother. Check any man that abused his wife. The father was abusing his mother. Check any man that does not respect the wife. The father never respects the mother. Check any woman that has no value for men. The mother has no value for her father. It affects our mind. Check any broken home. The woman will always tell you, I don't care about marriage. I can stay on my own. After all, my mother brought us up. Work on your mind, otherwise you think you can be independent. What you see affects your mind. You must renew your mind with the word. So I hear. You know what God said in Psalm 101 verse 3? I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. I will set no what? Wicked thing before my eyes. Lamentation 3 verse 51. My eye affected my heart. Did you hear that? Because of all the doors of my city. My Heart was affected through where? My eyes. 
That is why you see companies invest in television advertisement. You think they don't know what they are doing? They know as you keep seeing it, most of you can sing MTN tune without the tune ringing. Even as I'm talking about, you can sing it. The constant advert has entered your mind. So when you begin to watch a soap opera, constantly where the man slaps the woman, I can tell you, you will slap your wife very soon. 90% will watch home video, our Nigerian home video, suspend their husbands over nothing. If he's conversing with somebody, he's an girlfriend. It affects your mind. No picture leaves you neutral. What you see, you will do. I repeat. What you see, you will do. If you see your father insulting your mother, except your mind is renewed, you will insult your wife. If you see your mother behaving as a boss, you behave like the boss in the house. Because you grew up seeing your mother acting like the man. So you think that is right for you to be the man. Shout hallelujah. He said, for the weapons are warfare are not what? But mighty true God to the pulling down of stronghold. That thing is a stronghold on your mind. He said, casting down imagination. Not imagination, image formation. That's the meaning of imagination. Some that's formed an image in your mind. And every height is always against the knowledge of God. And bring to captivity the toss to the obedience of Christ. Yeah. But you think what you're watching doesn't affect you. I can tell you it affects you. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Hmm? I'm going to tell you something that will shock you. Those of you who are married, watch any film that contradicts, I'll put it in a very decent way, that contradicts the way you behave. When you want to sleep with your wife, you begin to act like that. To tell her how powerful. Just watch a negative film and see, a, a, I'll be very wrong now, and see how women are malhandled. You will sleep with your wife exactly that you watch. To tell her how powerful pictures are. Your wife will wonder whether you're a madman. That picture will affect your mind. So watch what you see. You want to turn your wife upside down thinking she's an agrobatic specimen <laughs> because of what you watch. That's how powerful pictures are. Nobody can slap a woman if you have not seen it before. Everyone slaps a woman has seen where a woman was slapped. Except your mind is what? Renewed. You can't come out of it. That's how powerful pictures are negative or positive. You stay in an environment where you see love. You won't know when you begin to show love. And if you stay in an environment where it's hostile, you become hostile. Number three. How many are blessed this hour? Glory to God. Number three. Walk in love. W-A-L-K. Walk in what? Walk in love. How to have a good relationship number three? Walk in love. First John 4, 8. I'm closing. God is love. God is love. God is love. I'm going to give a counselor here because I, if I teach love, we'll teach for one day. I'll be hitting points. Bam, bam, bam. Love forgives. Love does what? Why we're yes in us? Christ died for us. Anything you cannot forgive, you have not understood love. Now let me say this to you. We all have, including you, negative past. Everybody. Only one person never had a negative past. Jesus. That's why I said, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory. All, not some. So every mortal man has a negative past. So to start counting on the negative past of your spouse, you don't understand love. Because the past is gone. You didn't marry your husband as a virgin or your wife as a virgin. That means she has a negative past. 
Love covered a multitude of sins. So every wise person does not look at the past because all have sinned. If a wife follows a woman, you maybe you went to club. Sin is sin. For all have sinned. People who love don't even bother about the past of their spouse. It would be madness for your man to begin to ask, what was your past? How many men slept with her? Will you be able to handle? You can't handle that. Your mind can't handle it. Hmm? Stop talking about the negative past of your spouse. Let go of the past. Tell anybody, let go of the past. Say it one more time. That is what love is. Love. Stop listening to side talks from relations, friends, etc. Because every problem starts with what? Conversation. Don't listen to what? Side talks from brothers, from sisters, from friends. Mm. So here. If you give man opportunity, man will always say something. I hope you know that. Never discuss your spouse negatively with friends, parents, relations. I'm counseling. I'm giving you two points. Is that not true? Under three, you can call it A, B. C, control your anger with the word of God. Control your what? You know why I said so? You don't have the monopoly of anger. Don't shout as if your only one can get angry. If your spouse shouts to two of you, can't contain the house. Some women, they do as if they have a monopoly of anger. And some men, to be as if they have a monopoly of what? Everything. You're shouting. If the man too follow you to shout, the house can't contain two of you. So don't do as if you can tear down the roof. Control anger. He said, any temper that is not controlled is like a city without walls. And do you know how powerful it is? He said, make no friend with an angry man. Anger lies in the bosom of the fool and the fool says there is no God. Why die before your time? Moses drove the whole of his anointing into the desert with one anger. He was humble but feeling hungry. Some of you, the way you shout in your house, it's as if you have a monopoly of anger. You make the house uncomfortable. Stop! If you frown, me too frown, your husband frown, everybody frown, will you be able to stand it? Every time you make your face as if you are very tough. You let your husband to frown, whether you'll be able to stand. Or your wife frown. You'll be able to stand. And women frown is worse than the men own self. So, my friend, control your hand. If every little thing moves you, then you can't move anything. Overlook some things because we all have fault. No perfect person. Every small thing. Small thing. Somebody keep cops somewhere. He said, Who carried this cup here? Who carried this cup here? <laughs> Carry the cup and keep it where it should be now. I said, turn off the light. You can't turn off the light. Is that the problem? Turn it off. I repeat, nobody has a monopoly of. Now let me close on this note. Never do what you think is right in your eyes. Do what the word says. I repeat, never do what you think is what? Right in your eyes. Do what the word say. You cannot correct anything you're willing to change. Hmm. Let me preach. If the first way to change yourself is be willing to change. Uh, if you don't want to change, even if I tell you, you will say nonsense. Some of you have heard all these things before. You refuse. And unwillingness of what? Change is the energy of fools. Unwillingness of what? In the energy of fools. Fools don't like change. They condone their normal stupidity. Any wrong you can't change, he will remain with it and he can put in chains. Whatever does not agree with the word of God, drop it, no matter how you justify it. Stop moving the way you want. Let me close on this note. For the men, that your wife is giving you small stress does not mean you now pack to another girl's house. That's the latest thing now. Men will just move out of their matrimonial home to stay with one small girl. You the small girl too. Don't allow the man who has the wife packed to your house. Say the wife is not good. He says I'm the good one. I bet you three years he will pack from you. Your owner, he will throw you. <laughs> he will throw you, fling you like paper kite. 
Don't destroy somebody's home. Marry your own. If he's divorced, let him not meet you and divorce. Let me say this. He cannot meet you and divorce and say he divorced. He should not know you, then he divorced. But for him to know you, you are the reason why he divorced. If you say he divorced, then he shouldn't know you. It should be something he has done before two of you met. But for him to know you as a divorce, is you are the reason for the divorce. And God knows the motive behind it. So even if you get in, he said, well, he divorced his wife. That's what he proposed to me. God knows the end from the beginning. And what you sow. The harvest is always bigger than the seed. So look for your own man. So looking for a ready-made man who you didn't make ready. Go for a young man that will grow with you. That woman was the one who made it ready to that point. Allow her to enjoy her husband. When he was poor, she was not bad. Now he has more money. She's not a bad woman. Let the bad woman enjoy him. You look for one small boy, two of you grow to become good. Well, all I've said, when your own obedience is fulfilled, it will avenge every disobedience. 2 Corinthians 10, 6. Stop blaming the other person. Do your part. When you do your part, God knows how to settle the other person. Stop doing that. Ah, I don't know my wife. Leave. He said, Corinthians says, he said, when your part is what? Fulfilled. When your part is what? I didn't bother how my wife would be. I just looked at my part, love. She has her own part to submit. So I won't wait for my wife to say, agree with me. I do my own part. She will do her part. So stop saying, if my wife does not do this, I won't do my God did not say so. God said, you do your part. My part is to love. Her part is to what? Submit. So I can't be waiting for her to do my part. My own part should be done. She will do her own part. So don't say my wife has not done this. No, do your part. Don't say my wife has not done this. God did not say you wait for that person. Say when your own part is fulfilled. In fact, don't remove any peck in your wife's eye or your husband. Do your part. Do. Don't say no, no, no. And this one, no. Do your part. That's the only way your home can have peace. If you want peace, do your part. The whole message, don't take it to your spouse. Take your message for yourself. That way you enjoy your marriage. You enjoy home. Never hear a message that says, this man, I wish my wife was here. Wish you were here. <laughs> I wish my husband was here. Wish you are what? Yeah. This message is for you. Take it raw. Swallow it all. Mm. For those of you who have broken homes, Broken marriages. God will restore you with new ones. In case your home is broken. Maybe before this time everything went bad. God will restore your home. Maybe your marriage was broken. God will give you a better one. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Mm. Do your part. Leave the other person alone. Number one, what do you do? No, you have an invisible enemy. Number two, watch what you see and hear because Satan uses what? Conversation. Check the last time you ever did something, somebody conversed with you. You know what? The way your husband is behaving and you begin to listen. I think this man, you should show him the other side of who you are. It's a Satan talking through her. Don't think she's the one talking. Satan went through Peter. He said, look at you. You have been having peace, so no problem. Then all of a sudden, he said, you know what? This thing you are just playing around. It's because your wife does not know who you are. Life story I've shared it before. A military officer, I stayed with him and her papa for some time. The wife and him had no problem. No problem. But as a detective, he discovered that three times the wife shouted at him. They didn't want that. He said, come on, because my student in school. He said, as a detective, he did not discover. The way he discovered it was very strange. Anytime this our friend comes, she would drop a word. He said, this is your husband with all his money. He cannot buy a good car. He said, this, this dirty car that you'll be driving. If I'm your type, I would, I'll bring him down. So the man would just come. No, Allah. He said, look, my husband. They had a problem. Second, they had a problem. The third day, you know, I discovered it. As a detective, he just called the wife. He said, hey, I've not seen this. Your friend. He said, hey, she was here. He just called me and said, is that woman that's talking to her? 
the detective had told him for that. He said, ah, I've not seen this your friend for some time. The wife did not know where he was going. He said, ah, she was around today. He said, ah, he called me. He said, all this problem I'm having with my wife. Is this her friend? Watch the conversation. Some of you do it. Hmm, 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 hmm. That your, that your wife, she knows respect person. No? If this is her family where she enters, we go brush her. They are, they are telling you they are not married. If, they are, if a sister of yours advise you, check her. A woman who's not married, you're taking cancer from. Your sister is not married. You should give you cancer. Which cancer will she give you? To divorce. Check every woman that says, pack out, pack out. They are not married. Check every woman that says, pack that woman out of the house. She's not married. You can't tell a people to pack out. You know what it takes to be in a house. Don't interfere. I tell people every day, don't interfere in your brother's marriage. Don't interfere in your sister's marriage. Well, just give them the word of God and go away. Don't put your mouth in their marriage. Don't be a part of separation. We are going to pray now. Prayer number one. You cast out every spirit of confusion. Every spirit of what? Command the devil to take his hands off your home. Why? In 1 Corinthians 4.33, he said, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as it is all churches of the saints. Use. You command the devil out of your life and destiny. You can't confuse me that I cannot know who I want to marry. Do you know some men are confused? They see this one they like. They see what they like. They see this one they like. That is not of God. The man is confused. There are young men like that now. They, every girl they see, they just they say, ah, I love this one. I, all that one week, he looks at her and says, ah, this one fine, no. <laughs> God is not the author of confusion. There are men who are very confused. Even women too. They don't know who to decide for. Everyone will come, they say, hold on, hold on. You're holding on for how many months? <laughs> God, you are not the author of confusion. So for the married ones, cast the devil out. For those who are not married, cast that confusion spirit out of your life. Say, God, give me peace. Let my eyes see clearly. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. Cast every spirit of confusion. From families, cast him out. 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 The name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In Psalm 85, verse 8, he said, I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak. For he shall speak peace unto his people and to his saints. When you cast confusion out, you must speak what? In Mark 4.39, he said, he arose and rebuked the wind and said, peace be still. I command peace all around me. Peace in my family. Peace in my life. Peace is not only outside though. Sometimes you are so troubled on the inside that you are so confused. Peace on my inside. I decree peace on every side in my home. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. I speak peace in the name of Jesus. Peace on the inside. Peace in the name of Jesus. Peace in the name of Jesus. Decree peace. In Jesus' mighty name. Finally, we'll pray for miracle marriages. In Isaiah 34 verse 16, it says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall what? Fail. Nor shall want her maid. Do you have that? For my mouth, it had commanded it, and the spirit of what? None shall want. You, you won't look for somebody, they must look for you. And I say, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor from the Lord. Two sides. None shall want a mate. Lord, everyone due for marriage will not be delayed anymore. With decree, they will not be. He says, shall supply all our wealth. Now, every body, every sister, mature, due for marriage, immediately, every prophecy declared must come to pass. No more, even if you are married, pray for the ones who are not married. Use yourself as a point of contact. Lord, I am married. Give our sisters husbands. Give our brothers favor. Let there be miracle marriages. And you who is praying, pray for yourself. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. Sisters, I 
our brothers favor our sisters husbands that they will marry with that sweat in the name of Jesus all eligible sisters God give them thank you father in the name of Jesus you will get married every veil covering you I command it destroyed by the blood of Jesus let the right man find you Amen. let that young man find favor Amen. and we decree miracle marriages Amen. in Jesus mighty name now the prophetic with David Ibiomi every family that came for this meeting you are blessed Amen. every single things will go well Amen. there's no one that came for this youth arise that will not have a testimony Amen. Go in peace and begin to celebrate God's faithfulness. In Jesus' mighty name.